Hey, now I've been doing a bit of work with that machine down there and I really do enjoy making this type of content but it does show that I haven't done much housekeeping with these videos because I really enjoy making the videos, I really enjoy making the music but I wanted to create some supporting content like uh, the backing tracks and that because really I don't get enough time to make music and it is a nice little outlet for me and really I don't get to spend too much time with these machines or as much as I want which is all the time but I thought well there's other people in the world that are probably struggling with their time as well and trying to be able to lay down an idea and what I thought was I'll go through my process on the computer and condense it down into five tips as I go through making a little track and how I speed up the pipeline or automate things or getting an idea down really quick that's the main point and then yeah definitely stick to the end because there's a one little thing that I'll warn you when you go to export but yeah let's get straight onto the computer and start looking at how we can uh, speed up getting music ideas in all right we're in front of the computer now and the first step for me is always working within a constraint like uh, working within a template or having some rules in place to sort of guide me as I develop now if you have never seen a tracker before, don't be scared. This is just because I'm really comfortable inside of a tracker software. This is called Read Noise. And this is my template that I've got set up already, which allows me to just quickly open it up like I've got some basic drums, basic roads that I can use to muck around with, and a bit of a synth that I can muck around with as well. And being able to lay something down really quick. Um, so if I start. And we add some hi-hat or some snare. And then just get squeezy out a bit. Now if I play that we've got a really basic groove. Now I'm just going to undo that because I feel like making some chill hop like everyone else does. To start with I'll set up uh, beats per minute. I'll probably make uh, the BPM a bit lower. Um, change the amount of lines between each tick which will give us a bit of a swing beat that we can work with and then what I can do is 5 times 4 times 4 is 80 and that should give us a 4-4 four, four beat over 4 bars and then if I go back in set this to 10 add the snare and then we can add the hi-hat which I'll probably take that down to, we'll do five and then we'll add the extra. And then we'll add the drums manually. So we've got a basic groove down and with this template I've spent a bit of time cleaning up or adding the things that I use quite a lot. So like EQing the drums, um, having a signal follower on the actual kick drum itself which I can use over with the bass. I've got a few send tracks that I've got set up with um, some delays and that that I enjoy. And yeah it's just a place for me to jump straight in and then start editing the way I want to edit. number two which is uh, painting with broad strokes like you don't want to get caught up in finessing right now I've got my basic beat down now I want to focus on making the chords to go along with that so I've got a section over here for pads which I'll typically use for chords or pads or anything that sort of like washes out in the back end so if I start mucking around I had a nice little progression happening before cool 
So if we were to plot that in, we'll have Now if we play this That sounds pretty good by itself and what I'll do is add some delay just add some strum in there I might try and push that all the way to the next bar so if we make them we'll add that humanize function on them as well now my third tip is having a little bit of a mud map as you come into these things so if you can see there it's just a bit of paper that I usually write out in front of me where I have a um, plan of like the types of chords what I'm going to use and what notes I'm going to play I did come into this with a bit of an idea of uh, using a 271 chord progression. Uh, it's not set in stone, like um, I just felt exploring with uh, the notes in front of me. So it wasn't that I had to think of which notes go on what uh, chord. I can just sit there and explore with the sounds that are in Eric scale and see what actually sounds good to my ear and then plot them in as I want. <laughs> For my fourth tip, uh, this comes from my other sort of developer side, uh, working with prime numbers. Now, prime numbers, it's a scale, so 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and it keeps going. Uh, but keeping around those numbers, it's really handy to think of like, oh, I might put three instruments in this track, or I might loop this section five times. Somehow, using these numbers, just take out the... Uh, do I need an extra thing or it gives you a set number which usually works quite well in some contexts like uh, if you ever look at artwork they usually follow prime numbers how they space things out so you'll never see like a composition of four things it will always be like five or three um, but bringing it to music theory um, or what I'm doing here giving me ideas for the types of instruments I'm going to bring into this one uh, lo-fi hip-hop. I've already got my drums. I've already got a chord which I'm using a Rhodes. Um, I'm probably going to do a synth bass so that's three and then I might add two other elements to help flush it out and that gives me five instruments in total. So I'm going to sit down and start mucking around with the bass line using the bass sound I've got. So actually I might edit it a bit so I don't just make it a bit softer and I've got my core tones here so that's the base of my baseline <laughs> but I'll start adding extra elements to give it a bit more flavor so if I go Cool, so I've got my bass line and I might add a another instrument and I'm just going to pick some stuff from the Arturia Suite. So I've got a A lead and a B lead and then I'll create two medallies that bounce off each other. And All right, so I did a bit of work and I've got a DX7 which has... And then that has a delay on it. So, so I've got two different ways to make the sound different and then I've got my pigment. And then if I just start playing... And then if we change to 
to the delay. So it's just given me a bit to work with. About ready to finish off this song and there's one final thing with lo-fi hip-hop. Uh, I have isotope vinyl loaded up on my master track so if I turn that on now and hit play. Just adds that lo-fi goodness to the track. I'm just going to turn that off. Um, and yeah, this is pretty much my track ready to go. It's taken me about 45 minutes to get to this point, which is really good for such a short idea. Um, I'm just going to go and export this one now. Which leads me to my, uh, what you shouldn't do is when you go to export a project like this, we don't want to see final final blah 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 because well when it comes time to actually finding this again or if you have a library of these songs that you've written you don't want to have to trawl through and listen to everyone like you want the name to be as descriptive as possible so with what I like to do um, give it a name it could be any old name uh, as you see bike ride very off the top of my head uh, we have the BPM, which is 81 beats per minute. We also have um, some descriptors. So we have what the type of track is. So we've got lo-fi hip hop. And now I've given it some descriptors as well. So it's quite a bright style lo-fi hip hop. Um, I used a lot of, so this will help with identifying what your track is and then being able to export that and making your track from it. Alright, so it was quite a bit of fun getting a track down and really enjoy this sort of music making because honestly I don't have much time at the moment. But it's just really good to sit with the door, get some more muscle memory with the interface, figuring out different ways of improving my ideas and definitely getting those core ideas down of what I'm trying to capture because in the end doing multiple tracks you're going to learn a lot more by doing than just creating one very polished track and by polish like this is no means anywhere close this is just a musical idea i do want to just use these to populate in the back of my song so i'm quite happy where it is right now but from here i could definitely take it to those next steps and start polishing start exploring some of the ways to expand it sonically seeing what else i can add or take away and yeah start polishing this one right up all this stuff is to really get something out because when you have an idea and you get caught up in making a drum that and you lose that idea and it does get frustrating over time so being able to just get into something that you know really well and put down the basic idea then you can go back onto it later and be able to expand on it like these are my tips or things I've learned to really increase my output but if you've got your own definitely leave them in the comments below it really does help everyone else out and yeah I would like to see more and more tracks appearing and hearing them. I hope this has helped you in some way and also you probably noticed that this was recorded using or I use Streamlabs and I am thinking about starting to stream some of these build a track in a short amount of time like be with you guys have a chat enjoy have some fun together making music so if you do want to see something like that pop up definitely give a thumbs up and i can see how many people are wanting i hope this has given you a bit of food for thought and helped you out with your musical creation and i hope to see you next time